amending this bill to the House. Michael Ward. Mr Speaker, um, about a month ago I ran a public meeting. Sorry, five minute call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. A public meeting in my constituency about the issue of crime. We got onto a discussion with people in the audience uh, about the growth of the methamphetamine industry and um, the serious social, social consequences that stem from that. Um, a woman in the audience stood up to speak to this issue. She was a Māori woman, probably in her 40s, who later in life has decided to, um, at considerable sacrifice and cost, um, train to be a social worker. She saw a need in the community and is trying to meet that. And what she relayed in um, her heartfelt comments to that public meeting um, was the way in which failings in our system of state care over the years, in particular the uplifting of Māori children and the uprooting of them from their whānau and their hapu and their community, had caused irredeemable damage to those young people, particularly the young men she related, had left them without a sense of identity, had often led to situations of abuse and disconnection to the point where those young men were easy prey to the gangs, the gangs which have gone on to uh, form such a pernicious part of the criminal underworld in our society. And her story was incredibly powerful and has shaped my thinking in respect of this bill. She told us what we have got wrong. No one's saying that what we've got at the moment is perfect, Mr Speaker, and I must say that at this point. I contrasted that, Mr Speaker, with one of the very best, very short submissions I read as part of preparing um, for this bill. It was from a woman called Anna Morrison, and I just want to read directly out of it because it, it, it speaks to what we can do when we get it right. She says, Our whānau has a personal experience where the current system nearly failed our mokapuna. In our case, it was a SIF caseworker having a personal knowledge of whakapapa. They were from the same hapu as our whānau. And then complying with the strong legislative requirement that's in the current Act to look to the wider, very extended whānau and hapu for placement options. That prevented our nephew being lost to the system, as the young men who I just spoke about in the other example were. He has now been adopted by his great aunt and has the life he is entitled to. He is connected with his wider, wider whānau, participates in iwi activities, attends a rūmaki unit, learning te reo and tikanga, knows his whakapapa, has cousins of similar age that he now has contact and strong relationships with, and is a thriving, happy Māori boy with a bright future, and most importantly, has not had to experience life as a ward of the state. Those, those are the contrasts, Mr Speaker. And what I know is that every member of this House wants that outcome. I, I know that. I don't think there is any member who comes to this House wanting anything other than that. And so, Mr Speaker, it is with more a sense of sorrow than anger that the Labour Party uh, says that we have to stand and oppose this act today, uh, this bill today, um, because of what it does in respect of reducing the obligations that we have for appropriate whānau and hapu placement. And in the Minister's comments throughout the course of the different stages of debate, um, we've heard her at different times say, no, 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 it's still in there. Well, I'm afraid that when we are dealing with a situation in which 60 per cent of the children who are uplifted are Māori, we should be listening to the Māori voice in this debate. When we have people like Pru, Ka, um, um, uh, Pru Kapua from the Māori Women's Welfare League um, stating very clearly that this legislation I'm quoting here is really focused around one or two things which, we, if we boil it down, is a safe and loving and stable family, good, and early intervention, good, for which you really read early removal so people don't have a number of placements. The absolute view which has come through submission after submission from considered practitioners in this area, social workers, Andrew Beecroft, the Children's Commissioner, Pru Kapua, most Iwi and Hapu groups who have submitted, is that this bill waters down, waters down those obligations, those important obligations for Fanu and Hapu placement that Anna Morrison spoke about. Mr Speaker, there would be goodwill enough across this House to work through this issue and across the community. There are good things in this bill that the Labour Party has acknowledged through the different stages of debate, but this question of whānau and hapu placement and the way it has been diminished within this bill is so fundamental that we simply cannot stand and support this bill, and that causes us a matter of con uh, considerable reg regret, sir. Um, a Labour government believes that this uh, will come back to this issue. We've got to get it right, but the approach we will take is one to listen. We have to have 
a little bit of humility within this issue, the capacity and the willingness to listen to those who know this area, to listen to those who have submitted so passionately about this issue, and that's what the Labour government will do after September. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Lewis Award. Uh,